Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the post-game press conference in the second round of the 2024 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championships hosted at Simon Scott Assembly Hall. A reminder that the open locker room for Indiana has begun and will run concurrently with this press conference and close at 9.27 p.m. On the dais from Indiana, we are joined by head coach Terry Morin, graduate student Mackenzie Holmes, and senior Sydney Parrish. We will have coach make an opening statement, followed by questions for the student athletes and then questions for coach. Coach, an opening statement. Thank you. Uh, well, once again, I just want to um, uh, talk a lot about Hoosier Nation and them showing up tonight. Um, it never gets old to say how grateful we are. Uh, we needed every everybody that was in Simon Scott Assembly Hall tonight. And uh, they showed up big and gave us the energy and the push uh, to get to the, the finish line. So once again, we're really, really grateful uh, for our fans. Um, what a great team, you know, Oklahoma is. Um, uh, coach does a great job um, with them. They're, they're very well coached, but, uh, it, you know, great, uh, great balance. Um, we knew that they were uh, going to pose a challenge for us. We knew it was going to be hard. We talked it, about it being difficult. It's going to be, uh, we, we had to give everything we had and more. Um, you know, on a night that we didn't shoot it well, you know, this 38% is some is a lot is a very uncharacteristic of this group, as you guys know. Uh, but uh, you know, credit to, to Oklahoma um, with that. I, you know, I thought again, you just look at you know down our stat sheet, and you can tell that we got help. And uh, whether it's points, whether it was uh, defensive stops, rebounds, um, you know, everybody. Everybody contributed tonight. You know, certainly we we uh, really stuck the ball in there to Mac. You know, in the fourth. Uh, but you know, Sid um, uh, Yarden. You know, although she doesn't shoot it great, she has probably one of the biggest, most important shots for us to give us some breathing room and put us up by four. I think. Um, and uh, you know, although we got out rebounded, I will give our group. Uh, you know, they only turned it over four times, and um, that in itself is a miracle. Um, <laughs> But um, but we're we're just really really grateful and and I'm so happy for these guys and as I told them you know I prayed that uh, you know Mac and Sarah and and Ariel could um, end their career uh, by winning their last game in in the hall and um, and the other piece of that was Grace Berger was in the house tonight we came up short a year ago and felt awful about that but um, as we said this this you know she had a part of this tonight for sure. Um, but um, just really happy for these guys and really happy to be moving on. We'll take questions for the student athletes. Raise your hand, we'll get you a mic. Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Yes, uh, Jack Ankeny, SI Indiana. Mackenzie, um, you know, you're down four points in the last two minutes. You scored six in a row to give you guys a lead that you never gave up. Just what's your mentality in those last few minutes, um, kind of when you took over the game? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously I came out of the game a little frustrated a couple of times. Um, I was missing shots I knew I should make, and um, my position coach, Coach Rett, came up to me and you know just kept pouring into me, keeping me confident, keeping my energy, my uh, motivation up. And you know, I didn't want to end this game with a loss. I, I couldn't, I couldn't let it happen again. Um, I know how it felt last year. We all know how it felt last year, and I was going to do everything in my power to not let that happen again. And I just have a really Great team, um, full of people who believe in me, um, even when I don't believe in myself. And I think that's the that's the difference maker. Next, we'll go second row on your right. Yeah, Quinn Richards, Indiana Daily student. Mackenzie, the emotions, the energy when running into the student section at the end of the game. There, just take us through that moment. Uh, I mean, I did that a couple years back um, when we beat Princeton to had us to you know take us to Sweet 16 and. Um, you know, this is my last game at Assembly Hall. I really just wanted to take it all in. Um, so I asked Coach if it was okay if we did it, and she gave me the okay, and uh, we just went for it. But, you know, I just want them to know how much I love them. Um, they're the best fans in the country, and I've been so blessed every second I've gotten to play in Simon Scott Assembly Hall, and I'll never take those moments for granted. Um, they're memories I'll take with me for the rest of my life, and, you know, Assembly Hall is my favorite place in the world, um, so to be able to do that one more time was so special. We'll go front row right in the middle. Lou Friedman from the Seymour Tribune. For Sydney, um, there was a stretch 
in the fourth quarter where the possession changed and the lead changed like eight times in a row. Did you guys say anything to each other or in the huddle or anything like that to say, like, we can't let this get away from us. We need to do something special. It sounds like the way you're laughing, it was something. Yeah, you know, Mackenzie had a lot of emotion, a lot of energy in the huddle. Um, we just tried to keep her calm a little bit, you know. But we just trust each other and we believe in each other. And we know that uh, with those lead changes that go back and forth, we knew it was going to be a really close game going into the fourth quarter as well uh, and just trusting each other and you know Mackenzie had a matchup that I, I don't know anyone in the country can stop Mackenzie in the fourth quarter obviously and so we just kept getting it to her and you know she she took us to the end of that game we'll go on the left all the way out against the wall Addie Miners with WLKY News out of Louisville. Uh, for McKenzie, you know, it was a really physical game for you. And, and obviously, you play with a lot of emotion. I love that. Um, <laughs> but how did you kind of keep your head in the game? And, you know, you kept shooting. And even when they weren't kind of falling at the beginning, how did you just kind of keep your head in the game? And then they started falling at the end. Kind of talk about that. Yeah, um, like, I, like I mentioned earlier, it's just the confidence that I know my teammates and my coaches um, top to bottom have in me. And, you know, at some point I got to start believing in myself too. And those are shots, those are things I work on literally every single day, rep after rep, before practice, after practice, during practice. They're things that I do every single day. So I just had to keep, keep staying the course um, for the whole game because, you know, I knew if I quit on myself, then I'm quitting on my team and I wasn't going to let that happen tonight. We'll go far right against the wall. Uh, for both ladies, um, Jim Williams, WRBI in Batesville. And there seemed to be something in that fourth quarter. What was the moment where things changed? McKenzie, it, why don't you take that first? Um, I don't know if I have a real answer for that. I think it's just the maturity of our team, um, knowing that, you know, no deficit that we got ourselves into was going to be too much. And just getting stop after stop um, and, you know, really just controlling the pace of that game. Oklahoma's a great team. They like to play fast, and they did that tonight, um, and I think it caused some issues for us sometimes. But once we took control of the pace of the game, we got the looks we wanted, got the shots we wanted. I think that's when the momentum started to shift. Sydney, anything to add? Just going off of Mackenzie, you know, she said we got the looks we wanted, and that's what, you know, what we were wanting towards the end of the game. And, you know, Sarah Scalia, they defended her tremendously, and it was really hard for her to get open looks like she normally does. But, you know, she never let that get to her. And down the stretch, she made huge free throws that potentially won us the game. And I think that's really special. And I think that shows the growth and character of Sarah Scalia and how she was tonight. We'll go second row on your right, ladies. Ari Betterly, who's your network? Sydney, it looked like you had resilience throughout the entire game. What did this game mean for you playing in the hall one last time for Mackenzie, Sarah, and Ariel? I'm literally going to start crying, but I'm not going to. Um, you know, I, I, I thought about it earlier this week, and it made me um, think about last year, how we lost, and how, like, I was sitting, me and Grace Berger's lockers were next to each other, and just knowing that I let her, you know, leave Assembly Hall with a loss. And um, just playing with these girls this past year has been so much fun. And, um, you know, we said at every single game that we played at home that we need to protect Assembly Hall, protect our home court, protect the hall. And we did that this year. And I think that's really special as a team. And I don't know if that's ever happened before. Anyone? Maybe that's a first. Undefeated at home? Yeah. First time ever? No. My oh. OK. Well, a long, it's been a long time. But um, you know, just, just really lucky to play with these girls. And um, I've been thinking about it a lot this week, like playing for them. We, you know, we wanted them to have this special moment um, for their last time on this court. We have time for two more for the student athletes. We'll go second row in the middle, ladies. Yep. Um, Chloe Peterson, Indy Star. For Mackenzie, um, before you got here, IU hadn't been to a Sweet 16, and now it's the third time in your five years here. Just what does that mean to you? It means everything. Um, this is the vision that Coach Morin had for this program, and I knew the second I stepped foot on campus that I wanted to be a part of it. I could tell what she was building, um, you know, the confidence that she had in her players and her staff. And um, just to be able to be a small piece of that history um, is is amazing. It's the greatest blessing in my life, and I'm forever going to be thankful to be a Hoosier. And last one, front row on the right. Ryan Costello, the Hoosier Network. What would you guys say is so special about this group that's going to help you keep dancing? Mackenzie, why don't you take that first? Um, I just think it's that, you know, 
it can be anybody's night, night in and night out. I mean, obviously, last game, you know, Sarah had herself a great, a great game. And tonight, you know, Sid had a great night. Um, Chloe had some huge shots down the stretch. Yarden, Sarah, just we have so many threats. We're so well balanced. And I think it's just our maturity level and our composure and the competitiveness that we have that we are never going to quit no matter what the score is. And, you know, I think we kind of maybe the outsiders were questioning that about our team early on in the season, um, you know, our toughness, our competitiveness. But I think we've done a great job of changing that narrative and showing that we're a team that's just going to fight for 40 minutes no matter what the score is. Sydney, anything to add? Yeah, we just love each other. You know, we love each other on the court, off the court. You see our bench players, that play, some players that didn't even get in today, you know, they're cheering for all 40 minutes, and that shows a lot about, you know, our uh, chemistry on and off the court. And the coaches love us. You know, I love playing for a coach that, um, you know, wants to win it for us as much as she wants to win, you know, for herself. And I think that's so special. And, you know, you see her celebrating and getting emotional into it, and it's just, uh, just, just a blessing for us. You know, we, we all love each other, and we're a big family. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on advancing to the Sweet 16, and we'll see you in Albany. Good job, you guys. In here and on the game. <laughs> we'll now take questions for head coach Terry Moore. Terry, we'll start on the left against the wall. Hey, Terry. Uh, over here. Um, in, for McKenzie, you guys are down four, 64-60, less than three minutes to go. She takes over. Um, it's kind of one great players shine, right? Is that something, is that, a, you know, as special as you've seen her kind of take over a game like that in a big moment? Oh, Mike, I, I mean, I think we've seen her do that. This wasn't the first night. Um, that's, uh, she's had many moments like that where she's had to take over early in her career, you know, here at Indiana. But, um, you know, we just uh, had a hard time tonight just, you know, finding any rhythm offensively. And, um, you know, I, we just decided we had to we 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 had to get the ball into her, um, and um, and so you know, give our kids credit, uh, the outside, uh, the guards, and Sid uh, for understanding what we were trying to do, and just the patience that they showed. Uh, you know, when Mac relocated it back out, we were trying to get her deeper uh, into the halo. Uh, but uh, we wanted to continue to to feed her as much as we could, and. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was a special night, and we needed, you know, I think up until that point, she was she was five for six in the in the in the uh, fourth quarter. But I think at, up until that point, she was like seven for seventeen at the end of the third. Um, so she even mentioned it, you know, she was struggling, making missing shots that she normally makes. But um, you know, when we needed her to step up in the biggest moment, you know, she she stepped up, and um, and like I said, we just kept feeding her. Well, again, I, you know, just play calling over there. I just didn't feel like we could find any, you know, I tried to run some high ball screen stuff with Chloe and, and Mac, and that worked for a little bit. But then, you know, you can't, you can't get comfortable doing that against a team like Oklahoma that, you know, settles into the, what you're trying to do. Um, and, um, and so we just, uh, I just kept trying to, you know, go back to our playbook, trying to find things that I could just try to isolate her. The only thing I, you know, wanted her to do was to try to catch it a little bit deeper because they were pushing her out a little bit. But, um, you know, that's where I thought our guard showed great patience. You know, she threw that thing back out. Mac had great patience. Um, and then, um, you know, we could get the angle that we wanted for her to be able to, to score a little bit easier. We'll go front row on your right. Kevin Vera inside the hall. Terry, we talked about this yesterday, about the mental aspect of playing in the month of March. Um, I mean, when you just analyze tonight, I mean, there was a lot of big moments, a lot of yeah. moments that stacked up against each other. I mean, what is that special factor that allows this team to, to shine in, in moments like this? Yeah, I think there's a couple things. Uh, you know, Sid hit on it. I mean, they really do care about each other. You know, they're friends on and off the floor. Uh, they celebrate each other's success. Um, you know, I tried to not go down the rabbit hole yesterday with you guys in terms of, you know, um, did it still bother us, you know, how things went last year. But it's, it's bothered us, you know, it really has. And uh, if that gave them some extra motivation, that very well could have. Um, you know, I selfishly wanted Mac and, like I said, Sarah and Ariel to win their last game in the hall. Um, but to be able to do it, you know, for a trip to the Sweet 16 makes it even, um, you know, sweeter. 
Um, but, um, it, yeah, you know, give our kids credit. It, it was. It was uh, back and forth. It, it was kind of like that a boxing match, you know, uh, giving each other, you know, their best. Uh, and, 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 again, you guys, you all know this. The game is it's, – it's, 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 it's runs. You know, everybody has their, their runs. And even when they, uh, you know, they hit the back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, I think threes, and we, we called the timeout, you know, we, we talked about, okay, that was their run. Now we have to, we have to respond with our own run. Um, and there was great confidence in that in that huddle uh, that we knew. I told him by the time I think it was about the four minute mark that I saw him either we wanted to have it tied up or be within a point or two um, of going into the fourth. We'll go second row on your left. Jim. Uh, Jim Coyle, Indiana Sports Beat. Terry, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> Uh, th these were very two very different games. Uh, the other night I talked about pace. It was a track meet, right. and then tonight this was like you said, it was a boxing match, uh, toe to toe. But you guys pounded it inside. You got to the free throw line twenty nine yeah. times. Was that the plan going into this game? Yeah. Well, you know, we always have. Uh, it's always one of the keys for us up on the board offensively is uh, trying to manufacture points in different ways and. You know, we really felt like we could we could get downhill. Um, you know, to the to the rim, um, and then you know at the end, some of that was just because they had to foul. But um, but yeah, I mean, give our kids credit for uh, you know Sarah, all of them, uh, Chloe. You know, staying aggressive, Mackenzie, Sid. Um, you know, we we knew that uh, again on a night where we nothing seemed like it was going in easy for us. We had to figure out other ways to to put points on the board. And, um, you know, one of the ways you can do that is by getting to the free throw line. And so, uh, as always, telling, you know, peel those ears back and try to try to get to the rim. And um, and I thought they did a, a, a great job of attacking and, and getting themselves where we needed them to get, and that was the free throw line. We'll stay second row middle. Terry, this game was a poise tester, I mean, from the start. I mean, you've talked about some of it. They didn't allow you to really to get your transition game going, among other things. Um, down four, of course. And... How proud of you as a coach, you know, you expect your players and you hope your players rise to the moment. Mm -hmm. And collectively, Mackenzie had those six points in a row, but there was no flinching. There was no turnovers, right. no yeah. sign of any kind of nervousness. How proud of you as a coach? Because it's one thing to call the plays, but they got to do it. No and, doubt. And, no doubt. You know, what, what's going through your mind, your mind as you're watching? I'm that? just, again, a grateful, uh, proud um, you know, uh, we talk about maturity. I've talked about maturity of this group, you know, for the entire season. They're an experienced group. They're a mature group. Um, when you have somebody like Chloe out there that's your point guard that doesn't get rattled, right, um, that's really important, you know, because at, ultimately she's the one that is getting us into our, our sets and running offense and understanding pace and rhythm and what's working, what's not working. Um, and so I, I thought I thought Chloe's play tonight was so critical to ha you know ha the game and in winning the game, um, and um, and again just the maturity, just the the poise that they showed, uh, but also you know there's a fight in that group too uh, that they were not going to go away quietly. Um, and like I said in that timeout, I I knew that. Um, they understood like that was their run. Now let's let's run it back, and we got to have our own run um, it, with great confidence. I mean, there was no uh, other than Mac being emotional, you know. Um, but that was okay. It, she was just trying to, you know, get her get her uh, her teammates excited about getting back out um, and in in trying to get the regain the lead. We'll go front row middle. Lou Friedman, see more Tribune. Mm -hmm. um, you came in here and your hair was all wet. <laughs> yeah. Did they give you a Gatorade the, bath? The or favorite a water part, bath? yeah, or? of uh, you know I think going to the uh, being able to advance, you know, in this tournament um, is is the water afterwards. So um, they got me pretty good. Yeah, they got me pretty good. But as I mentioned, you know, uh, I'm soaked toe to toe or head to toe. Uh, but it was all worth it just to to be in that room, uh, you know, uh, just celebrating. Um, with that group, um, because you know, certainly they're they're su they're really excited. But um, you know, I, I I told them that I thought the team that wanted it the most was going to win it tonight, and I thought that clearly, especially in the fourth, um, they were a team that really wanted to win. We'll stay front row on your left. Amanda Foster inside the hall. 
Mackenzie led the team up into the student session <laughs> right. like she did two years ago when you went to the Sweet 16. Yeah. How special is it that that was, one of, that was her last yeah, moment and, at Assembly Hall? Yeah, and you know what, Amanda? She was a little bit emotional asking if she could do it, which says a lot about the character of Mackenzie Holmes and how much she loves this place. Uh, but, um, you know, she, uh, you know, asked if she could, if they could all, you know, thank them. Uh, for being such a special part of the night. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, I told them that they could do that. But um, and that's something that Mac did a couple years ago when we earned our, you know, our trip to the Sweet 16. And you know, I think for her tonight it was really special. She was a little bit emotional after the game, um, listening, you know, when the band was playing and, and so forth. Um, you know, this place has meant the world to her. We'll stay in the front row. And she's meant the world to us. We'll stay in the front row and go far left. Hey, Coach. Zach Browning, thehoosier.com. I believe with 5.18 left to play, you took McKenzie out, sat her on the bench, and she went back into possession later. But what was the message to her specifically in that moment? Get your breath. You know, um, just really we're just trying to get her a quick blow. Um, keep doing what you're doing, but uh, gave her a you know, drink of water, and um, it was quick. But it was just enough for her to, uh, you know, sit down for a second, get a drink. Rhett probably said something to her. Uh, and then get her back in as quickly as we could. Um, so it's nothing other than that. It was just uh, just to get her a quick blow. All right, we'll take the last question on your left in the front row. Zion Brown, Indianapolis star. Terry, it was a, a slow night for Yarn and just from the field, but mm -hmm. then she hit that shot yeah. that, that gave you breathing room to go up for there in the end. What is it about yeah. her that makes her comfortable, even on an off night, to step up in and be the one to take that shot? Uh, I've said it, and I'll continue to say it. She is not afraid of the moment. She's just not. Um, she's hit some big shots, you know, for us uh, in close games. This is, is not her first one. Um, you know, she is um, – she's uber confident in her, in her play, in herself as a basketball player. But, um, you know, I think the closer – I don't like them. The tighter the game is, the better she likes it, you know, because she loves, loves the competition piece. But – um, she is not afraid of the moment, and that was a that was a big one for us. Um, but um, you know, it takes um, a lot of courage to take that shot on a night, as you mentioned, where the shot her shots weren't going in as easy. Um, but um, we were not surprised when she took it and she stuck it in that moment. Great, coach. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Yep. Congratulations thank on you. the Sweet Sixteen, and Appreciate we'll see it. you in Albany. Indiana's locker room has five minutes remaining in the open locker room period.
Basketball Championships. A reminder that Oklahoma's locker room will close at 938. We are joined on the dais by Oklahoma head coach Jenny Baranchek, senior Aubrey Jones, and senior Skylar Van. Coach, if you'll make an opening statement, then we'll take questions for the student athletes. Uh, obviously, this is a really tough one. In, uh, in Indiana's a great basketball team. This is a great environment for the NCAA tournament. Um, this is just a little tough for us to swallow at this time. If you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function and we will get to your question during the press conference. If you're in the room, please raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. Front row on your left. Zion Brown, Indianapolis star. Uh, Skylar, I'll start with you. Just this environment was ruckus and especially in that fourth quarter as Indiana began to, to come back there. Just what made it so tough to play in a, in a place like this? I mean, yeah, the crowd was crazy. I mean, going into this, we knew that the crowd was going to be really intense. Um, and, I mean, I feel like me and my team, I think we did a really good job just, like, playing through it. Um, and I think we just had some shortcomings. But, I mean, we gutted it out. And I don't think anybody can disagree with that. Um, and I'm proud of this group, so. We'll stay second row on your left. Jack Ankeny, SI Indiana. Uh, for either of you, it was a one-point lead either way for a lot of that fourth quarter. Um, and I guess just in the final minutes, what do you feel like kind of decided the game? Um, I think that they were able to hit shots down the stretch. Um, and uh, we weren't able to get stops. But I think that we um, worked really hard and uh, did our best. Skyler, anything to add? Yeah, I agree with Aubrey. I think, um, yeah, they just hit big shots. Uh, and I think we had great shot opportunities. They just didn't go in at the end of the game. So you can't be mad about that. There's nothing you can do about it. We'll go second row in the middle. Nick Jenkinson, South Central Indiana News Network. Aubrey, for you, you had 16 points. You had three threes tonight. You brought the energy off the bench. Just talk about <clears throat> what you were able to contribute in this game. Um, I think we prepared really well for this game, um, and I know that my teammates and my coaches have given me a lot of confidence, so just knowing that I'm capable of that stuff, um, and I was able to do it tonight. If you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function, and we'll get to you. We will go to Zoom for a question from Ryan A Aber. Yeah, uh uh, Skyler and Aubrey, both of you, um, just wondering, what can you take away from this experience of, of this weekend and especially tonight's game as you move into the offseason for you, Aubrey, obviously the, the, the sort of confidence building uh, performance for you, but just given everything that this team has gone through and everything that will come back, uh, you know, what, what do you take away from this moving forward? Aubrey, why don't you take that first? Um, yeah, we're going to let it hurt first um, because it does. And then we're going to get back in the gym and stay connected and keep working for next season. Skylar, anything to add? Um, no, she said it all. Is there anything else in the room for the student athletes? Is there anything else on Zoom for the student athletes? If not, ladies, thank you and congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now take questions for coach in the room and on Zoom. Use the raise your hand function on Zoom. And if you raise your hand in the room, we'll get you a mic. Coach, you... Coach, you talked about the, having to play against the crowd. I, I've asked this every year when a team's come here to play. Do you prefer having the neutral, that be neutral site like the men, or do you like having the ability for the top four seeds to host as something you can strive for in the future? I'd love to have hosted, to be honest. Um, and we had some circumstances, too, in that. Um, no, I, I think you want to play in front of people. I think we need to continue to grow our game. I mean, it's, it is hard because it, there is such a home court advantage, especially here. Um, but I think it's I think it's important that we continue to grow our game. Now I do think that more people are are showing up to games. So those neutral sites, it'll be interesting to continue to see what Albany does, what Portland does. So 
um, really supportive of the way that the tournament's heading. We'll go front row on your left, Coach. Zion Brown, Indianapolis Star. You just mentioned it, especially here as far as the environment and the atmosphere. What makes Assembly Hall different? Well, there's people in it. So there's a lot of people. Uh, I think that. I think, obviously, they have a very good team. Um, and, yeah, I mean, obviously, we didn't shoot well, so that could be part of it. And I think you credit a team for that. You also sometimes credit the road for that. So that's something that, um, no, I mean, I think I think people were engaged, and I think it was a, it was a crowd that, you know, the band's engaged. I think people, I think the doors opened an hour and a half before, um, that's something that's unique to places. I think it's loud. Um, I, I never, I never felt like it was something that I think Indiana beat us. It wasn't necessarily just the crowd that beat us, but I do think that the crowd, you know, you want to play in front of people. And I think, I think Indiana is also a state that's obviously educated in basketball. So they see good basketball. So it's important for them to show up and to be able to see their great team that's here. And I think that makes it different. So I'm really impressed with the crowd. We'll go second row in the middle. Uh, Todd Golden with CNHI. Jenny, your team did so many things to take Indiana out of their game. They didn't. They weren't able to run. Yeah, the we just three, fouled a lot. Yeah, the three-point game was not what it typically is. When you do things right and you still don't come up with the outcome that you want, I mean, how much does that hurt a little bit? More? Well, it hurts because it's March, right, at this point. That's, that's because it hurts. And it hurts because... You know, obviously you want to go, and you, there's a lot on the line in terms of getting to a Sweet 16, but it also hurts worse when you sit in the locker room with your team after, you know, and you realize that's it. I mean, this is a team that uh, we've gone through a lot. We've had a lot of, you know, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, but uh, I'm proud of a lot of the things that we've done. You know, we play really hard. It's, it's hard when we don't put the ball in the hole or we put them on the free throw line or we get down to two seconds and then we're fouling. You know, I mean, there were a lot of those instances as well. And so we just needed to do a better job, especially in that fourth quarter, of really just holding our ground. And um, I, you can credit Indiana for that. And also, we got to get better. So that's, that's I think, um, that's the hardest part. Is you, is as a coach, you just want to dive in and get better. And you have a long time to wait before you get to really dive back into another game. We'll go third row on the right. Britton Ross, OU Knightley. There was a stretch in the season where your team lost five out of six games early on. What is it about this team to battle back, win the Big 12 championship, and advance to the second round? Yeah, and I've been asked this question. Usually I get a number of how many days it's been since we had a specific loss. Um, yeah, I don't. I think I think part of it is that we don't celebrate. We want we want our players to understand there's a process to things, right, and to stay in the process. But yet we only talk about wins and losses, and that's all that's ever thrown at them. And so I feel like this team did a really good job of being able to separate and just say, okay, let's just keep focusing on getting better. Right, we I will think go, oh, sorry. Sorry, Coach. Nope, you're good. Move on. We will go to Zoom and Ryan Aber. Yeah, Jenny, just sort of following up on that. I know you talked about it. Aubrey talked about it. Just the, the hurt that uh, you all feel right now. But if you take yourself back from it, what, what will you remember most about this team and uh, the way that they were able to fight through everything that y'all went through this year? Um, I, do, I do think that we genuinely and passionately and deeply really care and love for one another. And we're able to fall on our face. We're able to get back up. We're able to crawl forward. We're able to help each other, um, even in in the not so good moments. Um, and this, it just really hurts. And a lot of these, we've had a lot of these moments, um, but. I think it's one of those things that if this team really 
I don't think the story's done. You know, we have a lot of people that are coming back. We graduate Kennedy and obviously Jordan Moser. Um, but if this team, if this can really fuel this team, this might be one of those situations where it's, you know, not never, but maybe it's more of a not yet. And so I don't know if the story's done. And I don't know if you get to have a story like we've had in one season. I think it's going to be more than one season. And we'll take the last question here on the left, Coach. Yeah, Coach, in terms of Mackenzie Holmes defending her, uh, you guys kind of made – on un, uh, inefficient, she was shooting the ball uncharacteristically early inefficient going. Inefficient for you, for for her, for <laughs> you and her standards. Yeah, no, no, no. no but she just she was. She didn't, you know, she missed a lot of shots early, and then the fourth quarter kind of kind of took over. Kind of, what was your trying to approach to defending her, and what do you think happened in the fourth quarter where she was able to kind of kind of get in a role there? I think in the fourth quarter, I think she, um, I think she got really deep position on us, and so it was just a little bit easier. So. That was, I think, what we did a better job of in the first half was try to keep her guessing as much as possible in terms of what we were trying to do. Um, but, you know, I, she's really good. Coach, thanks for your time. Congratulations you. on a great season. Guys, it was a pleasure hosting your program. You guys continue to cover women's basketball. You guys do a great job here. Thank you.